evening, good evening, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to our first yeah. uh, webinar since the conference. Wow. And uh, this is kind of like a follow up uh, from uh, where we left off at the conference. This is going to be the dessert. That's what I like. Is this to call the it, dessert. Right? This is going to be the dessert. <laughs> if you are if you are a workout fanatic, it's going to be the warm cool. down. The cool down. Cool down. The cool down to you. <laughs> Warm up and cool down. Exercise. This is the cool down. But welcome, everybody. Uh, we see you coming in. Please let us know in the chat section where you are joining from. Absolutely. We would like to give you a shout out. And so. Absolutely. Uh, let us know. In fact, let us know where in the world you're joining us from we love to have people join us from all over so don't be shy uh, let us know in the comment section where you are in the world and also let us know if you enjoyed our very first wealth builders africa conference we want to hear from you it was so awesome it was awesome it was amazing it was phenomenal absolutely amazing uh, just lots of uh, uh information that we need in this time uh to really turn our finances around uh build wealth and be able to uh really take advantage of every resource that god has already has put a name on it for yeah. our names on our it names. and uh man it's just awesome but, but i see some people uh so uh julie from joburg julie from Cadman. johannesburg julie cartman loved the conference man it was powerful amen was absolutely awesome and uh we are there Dillian from Cape Town South Dillian Africa. and Greg we see Enzo Enzo Kosa Enzo Lauren Kosa from Maputo Mozambique Komishta Enzo Komishta <laughs> Komishta I presume that's a greeting it means how are you <laughs> <laughs> so good to have you on <laughs> we also have Cliff and Shido right here Johannesburg we have Dan and Vilo in wow. Durban South yeah, Africa and awesome. and they say Wealth Builders Africa was super amazing. It was, it was super, super amazing. It was, it was, <laughs> Amen. Super it was amazing. so cool. And uh, we have Jabu joining from Johannesburg. We have Corey joining all the way from Dar es Salaam. How do you say that? Dar, es da, Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam. But we say da. So from da. She's joining. <laughs> Corey, from hi. Welcome. Corey Grace, welcome. 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 We also have Kamel. Kamelida from Namibia. From Namibia. Where oh, in man, Namibia? Well, Are you in Vinduk? We'd love to know, Kamelida, where in Namibia you're joining us from. We also have Iris from Birmingham, England. Man, whenever there's a party, I know it's World Builders Africa, but I would gate crush if I was anywhere in the world. No, so that's welcome. Why, that's why I said we're in the world. Let us know we, because we know you're not only watching in Africa. We also know you are in the world somewhere. Oh, man, <laughs> listen, welcome, Iris. And uh, we also so have exciting. Clement from Ghana. So man, I'm telling you, this is this so is the entire exciting. continent. We have over six countries already represented. So and man, I'm telling you. This is what we it is Malawi. about. We have, we have Malawi, Malawi. Elijah from Malawi. Botswana. Botswana. Gaps. Wow. wow. This is yes, this it is, is so Vinduk. Vinduk. Namibia. City of Gold. Who is that? Pastor Henry. City, City of City Gold. City of Gold is Johannesburg. Josie. Italy. Yeah. yeah. We also have Hilton, uh, KZN. We have Rachel from Ghana. Hi, Rachel, Rachel Davis. Uh, welcome. Man, this yeah. is exciting. This is, so this exciting. is exciting. This is so and exciting. so just uh, quick reminders, uh, this is our first since the conference, and we already have dates for the conference next year. Yes, we do. And so stay tuned, keep coming to the webinars. We're going to give you this information well in advance so you can plan to travel to Johannesburg, uh, those of you who are not in, in South Africa. Absolutely. And also, uh, the second thing is we have a question and answer that we're going to do at the end of this uh, broadcast. And so if you have any questions from tonight's uh, teaching, please be sure to pop them mm -hmm. in the chat section and we'll be sure to answer them before sure. we go. And I just want to encourage you all to just share, share, share this webinar. I mean, this is going to be such a blessing. We've got such an, an amazing lineup for you tonight. So please share with a friend or two. Let them know that uh, Wealth Builders Africa webinar tonight is the place to absolutely be. Hey, listen, this doesn't happen every Wednesday. Tonight is the big one. We have our very own founders uh, of Wealth Builders 
international and are also wealth builders Africa and they're going to be ministering uh, to us tonight they are a special couple to Chipo and I they are our mentors we love them so much and man we just look up to them as our parents and they treat us as such and just you know uh, 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 encourage us guide us correct us and just love on us and man I'm telling you tonight you're going to get a father's heart you're going to get an apostolic direction it is going to be powerful and so invite a friend uh or two and yeah. let or them three. know let them know that tonight they don't want to miss tonight they send them this to link miss. and tell them get on right now and i'm telling you Amen. they're going to thank you later Amen. and so without further ado we want to welcome billy and miss becky epperhart welcome guys and over okay. to you hey chico hey. tafar we're man we're excited to <laughs> be with Wealth Builders Africa tonight, and we love you guys, as you know, like our own kids. We're so excited today uh, to be able to actually participate and be a yeah. part. And we, I just want to say we appreciate uh, you and Chip Otafara and your leadership in Africa and what all you're doing for not, not only for Wealth Builders, but also for the kingdom of God and what you're doing in your church and with Ashley and Carly and all the things that are happening. We're just really thrilled uh, to have them as Amen. our partners and representatives of Wealth Builders Africa in Africa. So They're changing Africa. Yeah. Amen. And you know, Africa is the continent it's coming on. I mean, there's, there's, I believe God has tremendous plans for the continent of Africa, oh, honey. Yes. Amen. So we're, you know, I was going to do this a little bit by myself today uh, or I know in Africa it's at at night or in the evening, and but Miss Becky, this morning when we were getting ready just a couple hours ago, he accidentally said, "Yeah, I said that I, what he'd be doing." I said, "Oh, I want to come." Yeah, so she <laughs> kind of crashed the party. So, uh, that, so I'm excited that she's here with me today because uh -huh. really this is about what we're going to talk about tonight is what she and I had learned to do together. And truthfully, she was the instrumental one who came up with the prayer list of seven effective things of prayer that we want to really talk about. And she, so everybody knows watching, Miss Becky was the one that was really instrumental in writing out that list and defining what it was. And then we're going to tell, we're going to talk to him, honey, about how we learn to do that together as a couple. Mm -hmm. So even if you're watching tonight and let's just say you're a single person, you're not married, you can still do this with a prayer partner. Absolutely. Right. But if you're a couple, right, married couple, it's even more powerful. It's powerful. Uh, but you can also do this with a prayer partner. And so tonight, as we talk about uh, wealth builders, we're going to talk about effective prayers for a leader. And this chapter is in my, this chapter on prayer is in, uh, the book we have on called Leadership Mastery. And so we talk about the importance of prayer in the leader's uh, life. In fact, we talk about in the book, we talked about you and leadership. Then we talk mm -hmm. about, uh, we, we call it this, the titles are Leadership and You. And then the next title in part two of the book is Leadership and Others. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about leadership and your organization. Mm -hmm. And so we have three things we identify. So this one comes under what we call leadership in you, you as the leader, what you need to learn to apply in your life in prayer. And so, honey, let's talk a little bit about the background of, you know, kind of where we came from and came up with this way of learning how to pray. Oh, well, we're going way back. Yeah, way back. Uh, at, at the season that we were in, you were doing a lot of traveling. Right. And we spend every morning together what we call coffee time. And what that is, it's our time to uh, reflect and to project and to pray together. Right. And so when he was traveling, that was not an easy thing to do. So in my time, uh, I was talking to the Lord and I said, you know, there's got to be a way because this is what we do. We found it's very effective. Right. And so we want to be able to do that. And so the Lord said, well, you know. It's just a matter of time zones. Right. And so I thought, what a thought. Yeah. Just a time zone. Just a time just zone. Just a time zone. So we came up with a, a way that we could uh, be together and still not be together. Mm -hmm. And so the power of prayer in agreement. Right. 
and which is what we were doing. So we came up with seven things mm -hmm. that were important to us. And we typed that out, mm -hmm. put scripture with it. And we knew that whatever we were, whatever time zone we were in, if we both prayed that, right, then we were praying together effectively and fervently. And so our answers were, our prayers were going to be answered. Right. And so that's how it really started. And so Sorry, we followed, okay. so, uh, yes, we followed the list that we're going to show you here in just a second. We we follow this list that we're going to show you. But the real secret to the power of praying this way was, uh, and we learned this originally from a friend of ours uh, named David Briggs that some of you know. He's now working here at Andrew Walmart Ministries. He also works with Tricor Global with us. But he also works at Andrew Walmart Ministries and cares. Bible college as uh, he is, he will be the new leader we have in one of the areas of ministry we'll talk about when we announce it. But, uh, but so what we did is we took these seven steps that the Lord gave you and we prayed through them. And the way we do it is I will lead in prayer on these seven steps. And then Becky will actually repeat pretty much word for word. We don't make it a, a law or a rule, but she pretty much will reflect what I'm praying, right? She mm -hmm. won't interpret it. She'll reflect what I'm praying. And the reason we do that is because Matthew 18, 19 says that if any two of you shall agree yeah. as touching anything, then it shall be done for them. So as mm -hmm. we pray these things, anything is touching anything. As we pray these things, these seven things, we get an agreement because she prays then what I lead in prayer to pray, then when we're done with the seven, then she leads in prayer mm -hmm. and we pray over our family, our mm -hmm. children and our grandchildren and other friends and people mm -hmm. we know, we pray for others and she leads in that. Amen. And then I reflect what she says in that. And so that's how we learn to pray together very effectively. Amen. And that's really changed our lives. It, it, it just took the prayer of agreement up to a different level right because we were praying the exact same thing we worked that out together what we wanted to pray and what it meant and so that's how we do it that's how we do it and so if you know anything about us and about wealth builders one of the things that we're really excited about is that we don't just tell you that you should prosper but we want to teach you how to prosper and it, those of you that have been following us for several years now you've heard us say that quite a few times and so we teach in Wealth Builders the practical how-tos, but the real foundation for the how-tos is your spiritual foundation, right? And so you have to understand that that the three things we talk about that it takes to really build uh, wealth financially is that, first of all, you need to get the knowledge, right? If you don't have knowledge, you need to get the knowledge. And then the second thing, of course, is time. You got to invest time. And then the third thing, that, that that some people have is that uh, then it takes some money, whether you're actually using and other people's money or you have money of your own. And here's the thing, you need at least two of those things yep. to be able to build on. So someone that already has a lot of money to make more money, they don't need quite as much personal time. They can use somebody else's time. They can hire it done, so to speak, or pay for it. But the reason I'm telling you that right now about these prayers is that those three things, right? Mm -hmm become the pillars that you learn to be able to build your wealth on. But the foundation of that has to be the word of God. Mm -hmm. And it has to be that Jesus has to be the center of what we do and why we do it. And the word of God has to be that foundation. So as we share these seven things, they become the foundation mm -hmm. of whatever you're, you're a part of this webinar tonight, how whatever God is calling you to do, one of the, one of the questions that I've been sharing with people in this last year is asking the Lord, what do I have to become mm -hmm. in my life to do all the things that God has called me to do? Mm -hmm. And you and I have tried to practice that we in have. the years and we've learned a lot in the, in that journey. Well, prayer is so important. Right. And, you know, and the Lord didn't give us just one way to pray. Right. And if we don't pray that way, then we're going to miss the whole thing. This prayer of agreement is just something that uh, the Lord showed us. There's different ways 
to pray. Absolutely. You know, and so like this morning when I was doing my walk, I was praying. Right. So, and of course, the most important way to pray, I believe, is in tongues. Yeah, absolutely. Private prayer language that the Lord, you know, sent to us. It's so powerful. But but for us to really get together as a couple going in the same direction and mm -hmm. what we're done is that we we learn, we use these these seven things kind of as a signpost, if you would, uh, as we pray to keep us in the direction that we mm -hmm. need to go and focused. And, and focused, right? And so the secret, right, to a lot of what we do, I've shared is in some of you who follow the teachings or in the books that we've written is focus, rhythm, momentum. Mm -hmm. And if you break your focus, right. then you break your rhythm and you lose There's momentum. momentum. And so it's important that you continue to focus. So let's jump right in, honey, and let's start talking about these mm -hmm. seven things. Absolutely. And I just want to say we have really still are getting testimonies back from people. Yeah, that have heard. That have are used it and, and prayed through it and added, tweaked it so that it's personal to them. Right. So these are the seven kind of topics that we use. And when I use the term topic, we actually pray. We say, Lord, for example, we'll say, you know, as an example, the first one here is supernatural favor. And of course, we'll say, Lord, we thank you for favor. And then you'll she'll say the same thing. And we pray that out loud. And so in just a second, we're going to go to, we're going to break these down a little bit more for you in detail, but supernatural favor. And then we pray divine connections that anywhere that God wants to get you in life, right? He mm -hmm. uses other people, other people to help you do that. Kairos moments are really what we call God opportune moments. Overcoming blessings are literally overcoming blessings, meaning that God blesses you there. A lot of times we pray over our real estate there. Mm -hmm. We pray over the other things that we're believing for. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Then strategic plans, where God is giving us plans on what to do. It's mm -hmm. not just that God will bless us, but then he's showing us how mm -hmm. and what the steps are we need to take. And then we pray the double, double. We pray that over several things. We'll talk about that. And then for perfect health, you, you know, you can't do and no. become what God wants you to become. If you're not walking in health, it's very difficult. And so these are the seven categories of prayer. And then let's go to the first one on supernatural favor. If we can do that, and so let's just look at the slide here for a minute. Supernatural favor is a promise of God, and we believe it is our inheritance. We already thank God for the favor in our lives, even if it hasn't shown up yet. See, God can plant dreams in your heart as seeds, but we have to water them to make them grow, and prayer is that water. And so when we pray supernatural favor, mm -hmm. we base that on a couple of scriptures that we actually quote when we're praying. And so one of those is, is out of the Amplified Bible in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 2, where God told Abram in the Amplified Bible, he said, I will bless you. Remember, his name didn't go to Abraham until chapter 17, but in chapter 12, his name was still Abram. And the Lord told Abram in Genesis chapter 12, he said in the Amplified Bible, he said in verse 2 of Genesis 12, I will bless you with an abundant increase of favors. favors. And I like the way the Amplified said that, mm -hmm. the Amplified Classic, I will bless you with an abundant increase of favor. So we just pray that and we yeah. say, Father, we thank you that you're actually blessing us with an abundant increase of, of favors. And then while I'm praying that, Becky will say that kind of as an echo, Father, we mm -hmm. thank you. And so she'll just kind of follow me. She'll be maybe sometimes a sentence behind me or a couple of words behind me, but we pray that out loud. And then we also base it on 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. Uh, where, where the Bible is very plain in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. Excuse me, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to make sure I get this right. 2 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 9 and verse 8, 9, and 10. And we talk about that where God will, in uh, 7, 8, 9, where God will bless us with favor that anything we set our hand to do, God will cause favor to come to us. And then Psalms 5, chapter 5 and verse 12 in the New International Version uh, he said that I will surround you with your favor as a child. He, and it says, surely the hear this verse, surely Lord, you bless the righteous surround them with your favor as a child. And so we say that the Lord surrounds us mm -hmm. with favor as, as a, as a shield. And yeah. so, uh, you and, know, one of the extra benefits of praying like this is, is that you hear yourself. Yeah. You pray it. I repeat it. You pray it, I repeat it, or I pray it, and you repeat it. 
Yeah. And you're getting it into your spirit, man. And pretty soon you're just walking around with a supernatural favor attitude. Absolutely. And so as Bill always talks, your things are attracted to you. And so if you walk around with favor as your shield and that you're going to walk up and just assume you're going to have favor with everybody you come in contact with. Absolutely. It changes everything. Changes. But you know, Mark 11, 23, Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, yes. be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, but shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe that those things which they say shall come to pass. It says he shall have, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Most people say, think it means he shall have whatsoever he believeth. But the Bible here in Mark eleven twenty three 23 mentions the word say three times and the word believe one time. Mm. So when we're praying outside, when we're praying out loud, like we're talking mm -hmm. about, like, for example, with favor, then what we're doing is we're speaking in our life words that direct the direction of where you're going in your life. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we pray is supernatural favor. And then the next thing that we pray is divine connections. And so mm -hmm. as we, as we pray divine connections, i I love this quote that that I, I got out of a book. This is a secular quote that I that I love. And I found this, believe it or not, I found this quote in a book in Hong Kong. You and yeah. I were actually vacationing in Hong Kong. And, and I it was raining. And it was raining. And so you couldn't get outside, but we we were staying in a in a really beautiful hotel sure. in a beautiful spa thing that we had. I mean, it was just a fa fabulous. Uh, place looking over the Victoria Harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got this book because I always like to find new books and read and study. And this this uh, this guy named Felix Dennis, uh, Dennis, who's actually from the UK. And he said, he, he, he found this quote. He said, I believe I was put on earth to get rich to collect the money that already had my name on it and then give it all away. Yeah. And I think that's a powerful thing that we have to understand that the reason I use that about money here's here's what we believe together as a couple that that many there are there there is a treasure chest of divine connections and Kairos moments because God is no respecter of persons. So let let me let me explain that. So when we pray this out loud, that there's a treasure chest of divine connections. That means God has people for your life. Mm -hmm. Isaiah forty three makes that very plain. He said, I have given people for you and for your life. Isaiah 43 verses, uh, verse five and six there. And so when you pray, realize that connections. Now, one, one, one caveat I want to make sure I say, we shouldn't be using other people. I right. want you to hear me now. It's not that we use other people, it's that God mm -hmm. uses other people. It has to be God in our life to get us to the destiny or the purpose that he has for us. And then the term Kairos moment, uh, which I think is the next slide mm -hmm. that we have, that Kairos moment literally means God opportune moments. And uh, in fact, you see on the slide there, it is a Greek word meaning decisive and opportune moments. And, and the Lord will bring Kairos moments to you. So let's talk about that for a second. I believe there's divine a treasure chest of divine, it's full of divine connections. I believe there's a treasure chest that is full of God opportune moments that God has in our life because God is no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. And once again, when you start praying like this, you start recognizing these divine appointments Absolutely. and these God opportune. Yeah. Otherwise, we look back when we reflect, we take the end of the year and we reflect. And it's like, if you don't know, right. you don't McCain. have your expector out there, you miss it. Yeah. You just miss. And you miss. And so this, so when we pray for the, this way, what we believe we're doing is we're opening that mm -hmm. treasure chest. You know, the, the Bible says in, in Luke chapter 19 and verse 44, that, that Jesus said that they did not come to recognize and know mm -hmm. through observation and experience the time of their visitation. There are, there are times in all of our lives, if we're serving, you know, I taught this morning in chapel here, 
at Paris Bible College. And I talked about service brings you access mm -hmm. to people. And if we learn to have the right attitude in our heart, then divine connections and Kairos moments will be attracted to our life. And then we can open the treasure chest, right? That has, so to speak, when we pray, mm -hmm. we're opening that treasure chest and we're also making ourselves aware of the divine connections and Kairos moments that God has, that for, God has for our life. And I see from a time standpoint, we probably need to hurry. So we have time for questions and answers. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I like this quote. When you release what's in your hand, God releases what's in his hand. And yeah. I think for us, that's a big deal when it comes to what we're doing. That this applies to our giving, mm -hmm. releasing our finances, but also it applies to our faith, right? Because Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So it's important that, you, that we understand these things. So let's go to the next one here. And this is what we pray. And, and uh, Isaiah 45 here, a while ago, I was talking about Isaiah 43. Now we're in Isaiah 45. And I love this verse. I love it too. In Isaiah 45, it says, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. So I love this, that I'll give you the treasures of darkness. Now, I want to say something about overcoming blessings when we talk about this, that they're in the same way that the divine connections in Kairos moments have been hidden, the blessings that all of this kind of works together, that the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Yeah. So I want you to see this, that these things are not obvious to you from just the natural carnal perspective. Mm -hmm. It's something that has to be a revelation of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. But here's what I want to say about this. When you start praying this, that overcoming blessings are coming on our life and overtaking us. I, when we pray, I like to say they're running us down and tackling us. <laughs> the blessings of God, I think we thank you, Lord, that the that your, bless, your overcoming blessings are running us down and tackling us. But that means that in our hearts and our minds, when we pray this, that we're going to recognize and the treasures of darkness are going to start coming to us and the hidden riches of secret places. Let me tell you what that means. It means that not only will they come to us, but other people who aren't walking in the manner that we're talking about in this, in this, how we pray, they're not going to see them mm -mm. because they're treasures of darkness and they're hit, hidden riches of secret places. And because God is no respecter of persons, mm -hmm. he'll bring overcoming blessings to your life just like you will to somebody else, but there's things God wants you to see that are for your life personally Thank and you. specifically because God is no respecter of persons, but yet we have to pray and believe God as we see, see this. And so as we pray, then we, we pray this way. Mm -hmm. Now, right here, we do this with real estate mm -hmm. and we'll pray. Thank you, Lord, for showing us a property mm -hmm. that nobody else has seen. Thank you. We do it with other investments. Thank you that you're showing us an investment mm -hmm. that nobody else has seen. Sometimes it's property. Sometimes it might be a business. Sometimes it might be another type of investment. And if I had time, which I don't, I could give you some illustrations of those things that have come to us in our life. But we pray this and we continually believe that the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places are coming to us. Amen. I had a person one time that asked me, he said, what does that mean, overcoming blessings? Mm -hmm. I said, well, have you ever been blessed? And they said, yes. I said, then when there is an overcoming blessing in your life, you will know it. You'll know it. You'll and I know it. And I'll tell you what it does, what an overcoming blessing does, it humbles you yeah. because you realize there was nothing was you could do. God. It had to be only God. Only God. And that that's important for you to know as an overcoming blessing. And then let's go to the next slide on strategic plans. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is powerful. <laughs> what Daniel prayed um, in, in Daniel chapter six and verse three, he said, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. You know, one of the, one of the keys here, and you mentioned this already was the power of praying in tongues. Amen. And the, and you say, well, I don't see praying in tongues in that scripture, but let me just point out something that word excellent there in the Hebrew in Daniel chapter six and verse three is the word Yatir. 
And it means to come to a point like a mountain, for example, would come to the peak or to the mm -hmm. point. And what Daniel did here was he yatired to a point of excellence and yatired to a point that even the priest presidents above was preferred above the presidents and princes. Mm -hmm. In other words, it causes you to come to a point. And that's why when you, when you read in first Corinthians chapter 14, where Paul talked about praying in tongues and he, and he, he prayed a couple of things, but when he, or he mentioned a couple of things in first Corinthians 14, one of those in first Corinthians 14 verse 14, that God would show you things to come. Mm -hmm. And when you pray, there is a, there is a, the best way I know to describe it is there is a pinging in the spirit. Yes. Kind of like, uh, kind of like a, a submarine has when it sends out the, the, the sonar in the water and it pings to locate things. We're talking about the treasures of darkness, right? And it pings and what it'll do that sonar will go out and then it'll identify the objects that are around it that you couldn't see mm -hmm. if you didn't have the sonar. So when you pray in mm -hmm. tongues, you pray in the spirit. The Bible says in first Corinthians 14 and verse two, that God reveals to us divine mysteries or secrets. Mm -hmm. So when we pray those in, and also in verse 14. So when we pray those things that what happens is there's a sonar, there's a pinging mm -hmm. that's going out of our spirit to where we're able to locate and in the area of strategic plans that when you pray in the spirit, I believe that in that pinging, the Holy Spirit helps you come to the Yatir mm -hmm. by helping you to see the things in strategic plans mm -hmm. that God wants you to do. And that Yatiring really and whether we're talking about the business mountain or we're talking about the government mountain or we're talking about the church mountain or the religion mountain is that, that you, you come to the peak. The more you pray, the things we're talking about, you pray in the spirit, God causes you to ya tear Amen. to the top of your mountain. Amen. And it's just, it's a, uh, it's a wonderful thing when you start praying like this to build, because you've ever known somebody and uh, you just say, man, they're just lucky. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot That's of people you once you start praying this way, they'll look at you and go, aren't they just lucky? Mm -hmm. No, it's God giving us strategic plans. He's talking to us in our dreams. Amen. He's talking to us as we're getting groceries. Amen. I mean, he's just talking to you and he's building this blueprint for your life. Amen. Which is Amen. Quite, Along the way. It's quite a game. Quite a ride. Yeah, it's quite a ride. Praise the Lord. And then we'll go to the next slide on the sixth thing we pray. Mm -hmm. Isaiah uh, chapter 61 and verse seven, this is on the double, double. Mm -hmm. And really you're the one that, I mean, you came up with all the steps, but you really, this double, double was something the Lord had put in your heart early on. I think we, we heard a message actually mm -hmm. about the double portion. And so it says here, instead of your former shame, you will have a double portion. And instead of humiliation, your people will shout for joy over their portion Therefore, in their land, they will possess double what they had forfeited. Everlasting joy will be theirs. And so one of the things that we pray when we, we pray the double, double, mm -hmm. and we pray that over our income, mm -hmm. like in wealth builders, we pray the double, double over our partners, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Over our wealth builder partners. Yeah. And so in fact, I'll just say right here, you're on the webinar. We, we encourage you to become a partner with wealth builder Africa, uh, and uh, you can do that either through Africa, or you can even do that in the U.S. as well. But we just we believe there's a double double. But now I'm not sharing that with you on partnership. I'm saying that's what we pray over. Mm -hmm. We pray over our income, our, our partners. We pray the double double for them. We also pray the double double over wealth builders itself. And then we have a whole list of things that we begin to pray the double double over. We pray the double double over our income, don't mm -hmm. we? And we and we say that, and we have seen, uh, even though we we have done pretty well in our lives and going back several years, the truth is much of that that we have has gone through the double double, and we've increased more and more. Not not because we're just trying to increase in our income or wealth, but it's the double double over our life that is causing those things to happen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know when we were uh, very young in our marriage. And uh, of course, Bill led me to the Lord on a date. Yep. And so we've actually grown up 
together. And he used to tell me all along because, you know, some of the old would try to come back and he would look at me. He goes, you are not that person. You are better and more than God had ever. And that's that I ever knew I could be. Yeah. And so he said, stop being who you think you should be and be who God wants you to be. Amen. And so that just really changed me. So when I saw this, the double double to me, that just sang a song Absolutely. to me. I don't have to accept Come anything on. but the best. And to me, the double double is the best. Amen. That's awesome. Well, here's a quote. I think one of the sentences we say in the book what have you been through in your life? Mm -hmm. I can promise you that it's nothing compared to the See, treasures that it. God has for you in your life. So we speak the double double in Jesus name over that when we pray. You need to expect it. Right. You need to expect the double double. Mm -hmm. And then the la last one and then uh, is perfect health. Yes. And of course, Isaiah 53 verse five. And in the amplified says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, the punishment required for our well-being fell on him and by his stripes, we are healed. And so, and so as we, as we pray that we actually speak when we pray over different parts of our, we talk body. our body and, you know, as we, as we've gotten older, we even talk to our brains mm -hmm. and we say our brains are functioning as we gotten older that, that we're healed from any anything, mm -hmm. that we walk in perfect health in our brains and our heart. We, we pray over our organs, over our our uh, blood pressure, over every, we, we just go through and say, we thank you, Lord. We're in perfect health in every area of our life. We pray that together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pray away anything in that last sentence that threatens that for us, disease, injury, anything else. And we speak the word over that and we we declare in the prayer mm -hmm. that we walk in mm -hmm. perfect health regardless mm -hmm. of what symptoms at the time may Amen. be in our bodies we yeah. declare that well one of the reasons i came up with this perfect health is because the bible says that the lord knew us and formed us before we were even a thought in our mother's womb amen well he didn't put in there an imperfect person or a person that wasn't created to walk. He did, he didn't expect you to walk in these things. Right. And so that's why I say we have a perfect health, Amen. the way God created us to be. Amen. He didn't create us to walk in sickness and disease and things like that. Amen. Proofs in our body itself. It heals itself. So I, I think as we as we talk about that in conclusion, these are the seven things that, you know, were prayer. I think they put the statement up. You can prepare yourself for the uncertainty of life. And of course, it helps you be a better leader. And uh, the truth is the most powerful part of prayer, right? Amen. is is how it affects you your mind and then the results that god brings to your life because of it and so these 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 are the these are the steps we use to pray together and uh, and as i mentioned in the beginning that becky prays with us i mean prays with me mm -hmm. she follows me and then at the end of the seven steps we pray for our family and other things that, that are in our life our that, are, that the lord lays on our all right, so what I'm going to do right now is turn this back. I think there may be questions and comments. We'll turn it back to Karen. Yeah. Karen is our vice president of wealth builders all over the world. She's the one that provides all the strategic leadership, and we really appreciate her and her husband, Dave. They're a blessing to our lives, and we have a special announcement we'll give everybody here in the next month or two about Dave and, and oh, some of the new teaser. things that he's coming into and uh but karen karen is the one that allows us in fact we're sitting here right now in our office at headquarters at andrew walmart ministries and karis bible college and so she's the one that allows us to be able to do this role she takes wealth builders and she is doing a phenomenal job so yeah. karen we love you we appreciate you and i think you're up oh thank you so much love and appreciate you too it's just such a blessing that was powerful billy and becky and i've got all sorts of questions uh here for you 
But want to also let you know that we've got multiple countries that are represented. I'm just going to read those off so you all right. know who's on here. We've got Ghana, Botswana, Kenya, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, Namibia, hopefully I said that right, Tanzania, England, and South Africa. Wow. wow. So um, that is a blessing. We're sure grateful for all of you that are joining us. All right, well, let's get started on these questions. The first one is from Carmelita. Hello, Carmelita, thanks for being on today. And she said, can I pray these prayers by myself? She does not have a prayer partner or is it not for her because she's it's just her? No, she absolutely can yeah. pray the prayers. I mean, I think the the we we came into it as a couple, as we said to it, but you know, Another way to say these is these are confessions that you can make together, or I actually like the phrase faith declarations mm -hmm. that you declare over your life. And so you, you literally can write those out. And in the beginning, you can actually speak the specific things you wrote out. But then as you pray those things over your life, what will happen is the Holy Spirit will then bring revelation and, and inspire you to pray things off of that, so to speak, to or from that. Mm -hmm. That And then what we've learned in response to this question is that when we do that, when we start praying things that come from, from that, you know, something, for example, that's not written down, mm -hmm. and we start praying that, we realize a lot of times direction and guidance is coming to us in our life when we do that. So yeah. you you can absolutely pray it by yourself, but one of the things I, the, the prayer of agreement is so powerful. Yeah, Mark, Matthew So 18. I think one of the things like the double, double pray for, for someone to come into your life, a prayer partner absolutely. that you can share things with and know that they can put it under one of these things and be praying with you. Amen. Wow, that's so great. Thank you. Also, we've had several people saying, hey, I want this PowerPoint. I need to watch this again. So I just want to let all of you know that you are going to get this recording along with the PowerPoint in your email. So watch awesome. your email. And if you know anybody else that would be blessed by these webinars, please share the information with them. The website is wealthbuilders.org forward slash Africa. And that gives you all the upcoming web webinars, events, and information. All right, this is from Soso. And uh, he says, good evening, Ms. Ms. Becky and Billy. Leadership Mastery and BMGC have been such a blessing to me, including the triple X factor. He uh, just want to let you know that he's using the BMGC to complement artesian skills training program for the unemployed. And so, wow. so says, thank you so much. Isn't that great? That's oh, awesome. That's a great report. All right. This is from Akande. And Akande is uh, wondering, how can someone experience divine connections in life? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, I think the first step is really recognizing that they're truly out there. You know, one of the things that you, you have to be, uh, you have to check your heart on is to make sure that you're not using other people or that your heart is not full of uh, self-promotion. That one of the things the Lord had to teach me years ago, uh, going back in the 1990s, was the difference between stewardship and self-promotion. And, uh, and stewardship simply means that the Lord, I will allow the Lord to open the doors in my life. So if I'm walking in the direction that the Lord wants me to go in and I'm obeying God, then there will be doors that open to me. The way I like to say it, there will be doors of invitation. Mm -hmm. And those doors at the time look insignificant to where maybe you feel like God is ultimately leading you. But if you'll learn to steward those doors that seem to be insignificant, instead of dismissing them, you pray and say, okay, Lord, it may not be exactly in alignment with what you're thinking where you should go, but you, you know, you feel a peace and a presence that you should walk through that door. What I've learned is that the Lord will then on the other side of that obedience, right? 
God is always on the other side of your obedience, on the other side of your obedience and things that seem small. You know, Matthew, I mean, the Luke chapter 16 and verse 10 says, he that is faithful in little things, mm -hmm. I'll give him, you know, make him ruler over bigger things or have bigger things in their life. And so you've got to be faithful over those little things. And so as you steward that in your life, mm -hmm. Then other doors come. And what I've learned about doors is that there are people that you will meet. And sometimes the people that God uses are not the people that you think are, that it's going to come through. Amen. And can I say that divine connections, it's a connection. So sometimes it's just a moment. It's just a word. Or sometimes it will be a season. So you that that's what the Lord, when you start praying this way, the Lord, you will learn to spot these things. Sometimes it's just a moment. It's just something that someone says that you need right then. Right. And so that's a connection. And so you'll become more sensitive and you'll start recognizing these connections. It doesn't have to be a lifetime thing. Well, Karen, you know, moment. you know, Karen, you're a divine connection mm -hmm. and your husband, Dave, is a divine connection to Becky and I. Mm -hmm. And when I first met, we first met Karen, Karen came into our life there. No one thought Karen, you didn't think, I don't think. And I certainly we had no didn't home. think that we thought that someday we would be here. that we would be here and you would be <laughs> vice president of wealth builders, you know, well, I don't think that was ever on anybody's plans or goals or anything else. It was just something that as the door opened and, and we both, grew. And it grew. We were stewarding something very candidly at Andrew Womack Ministries is where we were in Karis. And we stewarded that. And then the Lord led certain ways. And so I think that's where with divine connections, I think the reason the reason that I share the story and try to emphasize on divine connections, the difference between self-promotion and stewardship mm -hmm. is being in the role that I'm in as CEO here at Andrew Walmack Ministries and Karis Bible College, I see a lot of students who come through and they, they've they got a kind of the world's mindset of how you make things happen. And so I'm not saying that you just sit back and expect only ripe, you know, ripe fruit to drop off your head off the tree. There's things you have to do. I'm not saying that's not true. You do have to do it. But there's a difference between doing it God's way and doing it your way. And God's way begins with the doors being open that you're willing to steward. And you have to be faithful in little things first, and then God will give you bigger things. And so if you'll learn that in your life, then those divine, that treasure chest of divine connections will get opened. And now, Karen, you and I see it both on a personal level and also on a on a more uh, as important level at wealth builders where God sends people, even mm -hmm. people we didn't even know at times existed, didn't even know they were there or out there. And we see that in many of them, maybe not every one of them, but many of them become divine connections for the purpose that God has for wealth builders. Amen. It's so true. I agree with that. And um, if I could just add something to that, Yep. is um you know the divine connections are kind of like approaching something with a pure heart with the person just like enjoying that person and then just taking time not trying to force anything um not trying to manipulate anything right. but just being in that moment and appreciating us as people and i really think that that gives god a foundation to work from and build a relationship because it's not trying to get something from someone that's correct from a position and so um i'm just so blessed by our divine connection and uh we're just so grateful to god but that's i think that's key for people Man, to think it's a good word all right this is uh on a similar topic this is from clever and Clever says, since Kairos, Kairos moments is similar to divine connection, how can someone define that this is my Kairos moment? Well, I think that's what we talk about when we talk about Luke chapter 19 and verse 44. And I want to make sure I say this today. And you may they may have to go back and rewatch it again. But if, if, if you read that verse in the Amplified Classic Bible, Jesus said that you would come to recognize and know the time of your visitation through 
observation and experience. And this is what a lot of people miss is they think that all of a sudden there's going to be some divine picture that comes to you. But what really happens is that along the journey that you take, you're, you're following God, you're going in a certain direction, the Lord has led you. And I'll take investing in real estate as an example. And so right now, since we, we're, you know, we, we're functioning under the banner wealth builders. And so in order to build wealth, there's certain things you have to do in order to do that. And there's opportune moments that come to your life. Now, not the, which is a Kairos moment. Those are God opportune moments. And if something is really a God opportune moment, it will make sense to you both in your heart and in your head. And when you and where the head part comes in is you've learned from observation. This is in the Bible, right? I'm not making this up. In the Amplified Bible, Luke 19, it says through observation and experience. So here's what I've learned, Karen. The bigger the God opportune moments that come to you, the larger they are, it means that you've had more experience through through observation and experience you have more knowledge and understanding through observation and experience than you did when you were first beginning and so that goes along with hebrews chapter 5 and verses 12 through 14 where the bible says you can walk in this enough that even your senses he's talking about your physical senses are exercised to know the difference between good and evil. In other words, to know what would be good for your life or what would be evil for your life. Mm -hmm. And so the point I'm making is God, the, the God opportune moments will start off in your life more uh, in more smaller things, being faithful in little things. And as you exercise yourself in those things and be faithful in those things, Bigger things will come, and what comes with those big, what should come with those bigger things is your own observation and experience. Mm -hmm. And then you will know whether to say yes or no to certain things. And so, what I'm convinced of in my life, in the first part of my life, because I didn't travel these roads that I'm talking about, I probably said no to everything that came just because I was afraid or. I said yes to everything just because I didn't know better. But when the Holy Spirit is leading God in you and you do your part, God does his part. Mm -hmm. And you're able through observation and experience to recognize and know the time of your visitation. So I believe that there is a treasure chest of, of Kairos moments that God has for every Christian and many of them never even open the lid to know it. You know, the Bible talks about both in the book of Revelations and also in Isaiah that, you know, the books of your life will be opened. Mm -hmm. And when, and they'll, so God has a plan for every one of us. That's why Psalms 139 says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Book of Revelation says in the books of your life and the things that God had planned for you. Honestly, many people never even get in the first phase of what God has called them to because they haven't stewarded their life in a way that would be honoring to God. I believe that uh, God created us. And I look back sometimes and I remember the dreams I had as a child. And I thought they were just fantasies. But when you start walking with the Lord and he brings you God opportune moments, he is, he put that dream there. He's building on it. And sometimes we have to do our part. We have to grow into that. Amen. And so that when those two meet your growth, you learn to recognize it. God brings that God opportune moment. And all of a sudden you are still standing in your dream amen that's and powerful. that's a god opportune moment and i'm telling you it will hit you like a ton of bricks we always have this little saying we're living the dream living the dream and that also means living the dream also means there's times when you'll say no mm -hmm. right and so I, I i would i say you'll know you're really being successful and honoring God in your life when you have to say no to good things mm -hmm. because not everything's for you because not everything is in alignment 
with the direction that God has. And so some of those things, but you know, when you're younger or you can even be older and you haven't enjoyed some of the blessings that God wants you to have, sometimes we just say yes to everything. When you're younger, it's a little safer to say yes to everything because you can recover from your mistakes. And then when we get older, sometimes we, we get more hesitant. That's why we've got to increase our wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what we do. So we really can learn through both the, the head and the heart mm -hmm. how to recognize the time of our visitation. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so good. Can you comment on timing for a moment? Because, um, you know, a lot of people want really great things now. Mm -hmm. But there is a timing with it, just so that if people feel like they're not seeing things move, to give them some encouragement with that. Well, I put this scripture here in my notes this morning, not 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 for the webinar, but because I spoke in chapel, I actually didn't use it. So maybe it's for yeah. the webinar. I didn't have time. I ran out of time to use it. But it's in Ecclesiastes chapter five and excuse me, Ecclesiastes chapter eight verses five and six, the Amplified 2015 version says, and whoever keeps and observes the royal command will experience neither trouble nor misery for a wise heart will know the proper time and the appropriate procedure of what to do. Verse six says, for there is a proper time and an appropriate procedure for every delight. One translation says for every delight under heaven. And so the, there, there is a, a time, an appropriate time, and then to borrow here from this appropriate procedure. So when divine connections and Kairos moments come to us, sometimes, meaning that as the Lord leads us, there will be other kinds of opportunities that come mm -hmm. that they're not really a Kairos moment because it's not the proper time. And what you do with that, you just put it on the shelf, doesn't mean you don't remember it, or you just automatically dismiss it, but it means you put it on the shelf and you keep it there. And I remember as an example, Karen, you know, several years ago, Becky and I received that big prophetic word we got, yeah. 68 page word. And at the time that that prophetic word came, most people have never even heard of a prophecy of personal prophetic word being more than <laughs> a paragraph, but, or maybe two, but in this case, double spaced the original one was about 68 pages, double pace, and we got it back down to 32. And now what I send out is probably 10 pages or so. I can't remember, but something like that, but that I want people to see. But the the truth is, is that what happens is, is that we would recognize and know the appropriate time. And so, for example, in that word of prophecy, there was quite a few things in there that still have not happened. But much of what was prophesied in that back however many years ago that was has, has now occurred. But at the time it came, not one thing had occurred. And so there is an appropriate time for that. And the Lord says there is an appropriate procedure so mm -hmm. that it's not just the timing, but what to do. So that's what happens in these God opportune moment, Kairos moments that come. So that's Ecclesiastes chapter eight, verses five and six. Amen. That's so good. All right. We have time for one more question. I can't believe we are almost out of time. Wow. This is so good. This is from Spiwi. And the question is, how does one go about choosing a mentor? I desperately need one and don't know where to start. So I'm going to make a statement here I used this morning, and that is service brings access. Mm -hmm. So if you see someone you would like as a mentor or be willing to go serve that person in some capacity uh, and help them. And because what the finding mentors is exactly the same as money. Money is attracted to your life, not pursued. And so mentors are the same way. And what you do with your time and what you do with your attitude in the process is what will or won't attract mentors to your life. And so I know sometimes we think, well, if I could just find one person, but sometimes the people that God puts around us to begin mentoring may not seem obvious, mm -hmm. but you learn to serve. And when you learn to serve, it is that heart of service that will attract 
people to your life. And sometimes it's not the person you've identified that you, mm -hmm. you know, so sometimes you say, well, I will, I'd like for that person to mentor mm -hmm. me. You go start serving them, that person, but that person may end up not being your mentor, but somebody else, God will send you because your service attracts that person to your life. Well, I think that old saying that says that, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher will be. Show up. And so a lot of times we have to work harder on ourselves mm -hmm. than we do. So many times we want this quick thing to happen. Microwave. And if I could just talk to that person, then everything in my life will be better. And that's not true. You find a mentor, you have to listen, you have to study, you have to do due diligence because it's changing you. It's not some secret power that they're going to give you. Right. And that's how we sometimes miss the very mentor sitting in front of us. And so to find your mentor, right? <laughs> yep, I'm going to give this. I normally don't go this far, but I'm going to say this. You have to learn to be faithful, available, and teachable. And what I do with people who come to my life, the first time that want to be mentored, I poke the bear. And that means that I challenge them with something in some way, right, Karen? And I challenge them, I challenge them some way and I see what comes out. And, it, and if it's a, if it's a immature attitude where somebody needs to grow and change, not ready. I'll know they're not ready at that point to be mentored. And uh, I can't even teach some of that stuff out loud to people because they think I'm doing it for personal reasons. Like, you know, I, I need somebody to mentor. In other words, the point is I do it to make sure their heart is where it needs to be able to help them. And so that those are the kind of things that people need to learn and understand that a true mentor will be attracted to your life because of your, of your attitude and your willingness to serve. Mm -hmm. That's so good. I remember one of the things that, that you've shared on that too, is if someone just really wants you to endorse their thought process, right? They really aren't ready to be mentored because they just want you to put a stamp of approval on what they think is right. And I, I just remember that. I think that's so helpful. Let me just tell you this. Somebody can't mentor you if you're not willing for them to offend your head. Mm. Oh boy. So you have to be, so a true mentor will offend your head. Now I, you do your best not to offend their heart, right? But they will offend your head. You, if you're a true mentor, you will offend their head because you have to challenge the disabling beliefs that they're living by. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know it. They don't even know that there's things up there. And I tell stories about that in my own life where I actually got offended and there were people that cared enough about me to come sit me down and say, listen, you're not thinking right. Okay. I care about you. I truly love you, but how you're thinking right now, you're never going to get past this until you change how you're thinking. And I appreciated they loved me enough to offend my head so I could get on the right track. And that that's the kind of people. And let me say this, if you don't have a mentor or somebody you trust at that level, where they can offend your head, then you're probably not going to get really helped. Wow, well, that is so good. A mentor, a mentor cares about the whole person. Absolutely. Spirit, soul, and body. They're not there just to train one part or depart their wisdom into certain Yeah, I mean, vessels. You get, a mentor needs to care <laughs> about the mentoree, but the mentoree has to be willing for their head to be offended. Wow, so good. We are just getting a ton of comments, Billy and Becky, on how much people are loving this. Jubilee says, I wish this was two hours. <laughs> they want more. Um, but if Pastor Tafar and Chippo are on, um, I'd love to have you come back on to close us out. Oh, well, thank you, Pastor Tafara. But I, uh, before I turn it over to you to close out, I do want to let people know uh, that one of the things we let you know about here is with these webinars are upcoming events. And we've got an event coming up that is a Wealth Builders Real Estate Workshop. And we've got a special code for you in Africa 
that would allow you to actually get $200 off that live stream ticket so that you could uh, tune in for just $97. It's over 20 hours of teaching. You can watch it live over the weekend or you have three weeks afterwards to be able to watch it. So if you're wow. interested in that, uh, we're putting that link up at wealthbuilders.org forward slash, e forward slash events. And the code is RE Africa. That's RE Africa. All right, that was amazing. Pastor Tafar, I'm gonna turn it over to you to close us out today. Oh, well, thank you so much, uh, Karen. And thank you so much to Billy and Miss Becky. Man, I've, I have a ton of notes uh, that I just uh, wrote down here. Just so insightful and full of wisdom. And man, I, I wasn't lying when I said tonight is on. And I can see with the comments that we are receiving that everyone was thoroughly blessed. And uh, just to reiterate what Karen has already said, we are going to send this recording to all of you guys so you can listen to it again. And uh, also, if you have not already done so, please, please do get on our emailing list. And you can do so by visiting our website, wealthbuilders.org forward slash Africa. And uh, when you do that, you'll be able to hear about all our webinars, all the different events that are happening. And also, I want to encourage all of you to uh, get this offer for $97. This is this is way cheaper. Uh, Karen, do you mind sharing how much uh, the people that are actually attending are, are registering for, just so everyone can have a perspective of how cheap this is? Yeah, so uh, the in-person is $697. And uh, the live stream is normally $297. So we just want to give you every opportunity to be a part of this. And so, guys, we are getting it at a big discount just so we can get this information. I'm telling you, this is the information that you want. It's going to inspire you. It's going to uh, bring you up to speed with what's happening in the market, in the real estate market, which is usually the same world over. There may be some nuances that are different, but... It's generally the same trends. And so I encourage all of you guys to get on that and uh, let's get the uh, real estate uh, 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 training uh, registered. And uh, man, this has been a blessing. Again, thank you for joining tonight. We love you. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you next month. God bless. Bye-bye.